Hello there, today we will have a look at the ITX PC and the issues that it has developed recently. Here is the short version. The ITX PC was experiencing some weird issues, random BSODs, and it would randomly crash. These crashes made me suspect the power supply because it consistently crashed with the power off. To prove my theory I used the PC for about a week with the power supply next to it. See picture. First I will unpack the new mini ITX power supply. Here is a closer look at the label, it shows the product description, article number and some other information. A closer look at the connectors. The 12 volt DC in jack. SATA power. Twelve volt CPU power, Molex power, the PCB with the twenty pin ATX power connector, this mini ITX power supply seems to be well made considering that it was only eighteen point nine five euros excluding shipping. The plus 5 VSB rail is provided by an IC from Diozinc, it uses the 330 inductor. The voltages are monitored by a supervisor IC from Weltrand. These two 8-pin ICs are probably responsible for creating the 3.3 volt and the 5 volt rails. This is the power supply that will power the mini ITX PC. This board has a very bright blue LED to show that it's receiving 12 volt. First the hard disk has to be removed. Now the ATX connector is better accessible. Let's remove the 12 volt CPU power connector first. The ATX connector has been removed. Now let's remove the 40 automotive Pico PSU. Putting the M3 bolt and nut back together so they don't get lost. Let's remove the last screw. Here we have the Automotive Pico PSU, recapped by me on September 14, 2019. Now the time has come to plug the 20-pin Mini ITX PSU in the 24-pin ATX socket on the motherboard.
unwrapping the other wires and connectors. Plugging in the 12 volt processor power. Connecting the wires to the PSU board. Plugging the PSU board back in the motherboard again. Connecting the ground wire to the case and motherboard using a motherboard screw. This belly magnetic screwdriver is not very helpful. The ground wire seems to be connected good and proper. Now let's slide the hard drive back into the case. Let's plug the SATA data cable back in the motherboard. Let's plug the SATA power cable back in the hard drive. If it was any shorter it would not reach. The 12 volt input is just dangling out of the hole where the SFX power supply used to be. The power supply had to go because of the HB802 chipset cooler that I fitted to this motherboard. Let's see if the PC will turn on. Close up of the blue standby power LED. A look from the other side of the PC. We have power, and it even posted. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.